All right, so in this lecture, we're going to go over the uh, autonomics of the pelvis, um, which is a pretty complex topic. Um, so we're going to spend some time kind of really walking through the different pathways, both for the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, um, and then also um, tie in some clinical correlates as well. Just to start out with an overview, so we have um, kind of walk through the autonomic components in this diagram here that are involved in the pelvis. So really the central hub of both parasympathetic and sympathetic activity in the pelvis is the inferior hypogastric plexus. And this is a network of ganglion and nerves that are kind of surround and flank the rectum on either side. Um, and then they're just medial to the um, inter internal uh, iliac artery on, each, on either side. Um, and so they receive both sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers. Um, the sympathetic fibers can either come for, through the superior uh, hypogastric. Um, they can either synapse here or they can keep traveling down in here and then synapse down in the inferior hypogastric. They can also come down through the sympathetic chain and then travel out um, through the sacrosplanchnic nerves as well to reach the uh, inferior hypogastric plexus. Then the parasympathetic fibers, they originate in the S2 through S4 region of the spinal cord. So S2 through S4, and then they come out and then travel through the pelvic splanchnic nerves here, and then they make their way up here to the inferior hypogastric uh, plexus. Now they don't synapse here, they end up synapsing in the, just like all parasympathetic fibers in the terminal, in the terminal ganglion located in the wall of the target organ. So for the sympathetic pathways, you have really two routes. Um, the superior hypogastric plexus route, or you have um, the route through the sympathetic chain. And they both converge on the inferior hypogastric plexus. Now for the first route, in the superior hypogastric plexus, which is located just proximal to the bifurcation of the aorta, it contains no parasympathetic fibers, and it receives nerve fibers from two sources. You have the intermesenteric plexus, just proximal to it. Um, and then you also have the lumbar splanchnic nerves um, coming in as well. And so these cell bodies of these neurons, they originate in the T1 through L2 levels of the spinal cord. So you'll have a neuron with its cell body in here. And it's, this is the presynaptic neuron. And, and then it comes out and travels through one of these two ways, makes its way to the superior hypogastric plexus, and it's most likely going to synapse. Most fib sympathetic fibers uh, synapse in the superior hypogastric plexus. So they synapse there, and then the postsynaptic neuron makes its way down to the inferior hypogastric plexus, where it travels through and then makes its way to the target organ. Now, the second place is via the sacral splanchnic nerves. Now, the sacral splanchnic nerves can, can carry um, postsynaptic sympathetic fibers. They can carry presynaptic uh, sympathetic fibers. They also carry afferent uh, visceral fibers coming from the organs, uh, carrying sensory information from the organs back through to the spinal cord. Now, the cell bodies of the neurons traveling through the sacral splanchnic nerves, they're located in one of two places. Now, either you can have a synapse kind of just proximal to it. Um, here where a neuron from a uh, superior area in the body comes down the chain and synapses here in the ganglion and then the postsynaptic uh, neuron kind of exits out the sacral splanchnic nerve and makes its way to the inferior hypogastric plexus. The other location is in the sacral spinal cord, the S2 through S4 areas, so it's in the intermediate horn, so you have the cell body in here and then it exits out through the sacral spinal nerve, the corresponding level and then exits there through the gray rami, makes its way into the uh, sympathetic chain, and then it can synapse here, and then you have a po another postganglionic sympathetic fiber traveling out this way. The other thing that can happen is you can have, uh, again, the cell body of a presynaptic fiber traveling here in the originating in the sacral spinal cord, comes out the sacral spinal nerve, and then it exits through the gray rami into the sympathetic chain. But instead of synapsing, it just kind of goes through and then makes its way into the inferior hypogastric plexus where it can synapse in here or it can synapse into one of these more terminal ganglion kind of not, not located in the wall but kind of just adjacent to the target organ because many of these organs have kind of their own small plexa, plexi of uh, ganglion. And that's where any sympathetic fibers that haven't synapsed before that time can synapse there before they reach their target organ. 
A unique feature of the uh, autonomic nervous system in the pelvis is the pelvic pain line. And what it does is it kind of delineates which pathway visceral afferent fibers will travel from each respective organ. And as you can see in each of these diagrams, we've kind of outlined the male pelvic pain line and then the female pelvic pain line. And it really the definition of the line is the same in both. It's an imaginary line, and it's determined by where the peritoneum is. So any organ that's touched by the peritoneum or, that's, um, and, or any part of any organ that's touched by the peritoneum, it's considered above the pelvic pain line. So the bladder, for example, the, the fundus up here is considered um, above the pelvic pain line. Um, because it's above, it's touched by the, by this peritoneum. So this peritoneum, you can see here, kind of drapes down and touches the, the bladder. Now the body of the bladder here, that's below the pe pelvic pain line. So that's going to take a different route. Same thing. So anything down here below in the male is considered below the pelvic pain line. And that's going to follow the parasympathetic pathway. Anything above the pelvic pain line, that's going to follow the sympathetic pathway. Um, and we'll talk about that in a second. So just to be clear here, in the female, same thing. So the fundus of the bladder is here. That's above the pelvic pain line because it's touching where the peritoneum is. So the peritoneum kind of comes down here and drapes over the fundus of the bladder, over the fundus of the uterus. So the fundus of the uterus is also um, considered above the pelvic pain line. Now that differs. The body of the uterus and then the cervix and then the vagina here, those are all below the pelvic pain line. Um, same thing with the rectum in both um, genders, both below the pelvic pain line. Same thing, fibers be or below the pelvic pain line are going to follow the parasympathetic pathway. Um, par organs or parts of organs above the pelvic pain line are going to follow the sympathetic pathways. So just to outline where these fibers exactly will travel. So let's say, we let's take the bladder for example. So we have the body of the bladder here. Uh, so we'll have afferent fibers, they'll travel, since it's below the pelvic pain line, it's going to follow the parasympathetic pathway. So it's going to follow these, go up these pelvic splanting nerves, go into the sacral spinal nerves, um, into the dorsal ganglion here, go through the dorsal root, and then make its way into this um, dorsal horn of the spinal cord. And that's where we will receive the fiber, and then the, re the following fiber from that will go up into the, bring the sensory information to the brain. Now let's say we have the fundus of the bladder, which is here. So fundus of the bladder. This was body. Fundus of the bladder, that's going to follow the sympathetic pathway. And really it's going to follow the pathway up through the superior hypogastric. And so these fibers, they'll travel up here and all the way up through the inferior hypogastric and then travel along nerves up to the superior hypogastric plexus. And then they'll travel through those lumbar, lumbar splanchnic nerves. Um, and make their way up th via the lumbar splanchnic up to the um, spinal cord area in the lumbar and thoracic area, and then they'll, they'll again they'll they'll go through they'll have they'll go through the DR synapse and the DRG where their cell bodies are located, and then travel through the dorsal root into the spinal cord in the thoracic and lumbar areas. Now, just to bring this home, any if the fibers travel up through this sympathetic pathway up through the lumbar splanchnic, they're going to be the pain from this. If you have pain in the fundus of the bladder, something above the pelvic pain line, it's going to be referred to the lumbar dermatomes. So that's where the pain will be felt. It'll be kind of that dull, visceral pain felt in, the, uh, in these dermatome areas. Now, below the pelvic pain line, it's going to be referred to the S2 through S4 visceral layers, or, or S2 through S4 dermatomes. So again, if it's below the pelvic pain line, like in the bladder, in the body of the bladder, it'll be felt in the S2 through S4 area. So just to summarize, you have this table here above the pelvic pain line. So that includes, again, the superior fundus region of the bladder, the fundus of the uterus, the ovaries, because those are really in the abdomen, the sigmoid colon, because that's kind of just before um, it transitions into the pelvis, the GI tract will transition to the pelvis, the proximal rectum, is in the is just above the pelvic pain line. Now, what's below the the pelvic pain line is the body of the bladder, the body of the uterus, the all the distal urinary tracts of the urethra, and then the vagina is below the pelvic line pain line, and then the terminal rectum. The terminal rectum all the way up to um, where it starts getting in transitions into that skin area, perianal skin area, 
um, then that becomes somatic innervation. So that doesn't follow the visceral. That follows through the pudendal nerve for somatic, visceral, uh, somatic cutaneous innervation. And that closes out our discussion of autonomics in the pelvis.